The season is still many months away, but that doesn't mean that we can't talk about the upcoming Louisville football team. We're going to discuss the key freshmen to watch for this offseason on this episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone and I also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. I want to take this time, as I do every episode, to personally thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville Podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team every day. As I mentioned in the opener, we are going to discuss, I guess identify and then discuss, the key freshmen to watch for over the offseason as we head into the 2022 football season. Um, And then in the final segment of the show, we will conduct the weekly mailbag. So we'll start out with the offense. Um, There are three offensive and three defensive incoming freshmen that I want to identify as the players to watch. We'll start out offensively. That is Caleb Johnson, uh, Chance Morrow, and Chris Bell. We'll start out talking about Caleb Johnson, uh, who is on campus now, uh, dealing, I believe, with a little bit of an injury. So I don't necessarily think that he participated a lot in spring ball. I may be completely wrong, but that just seems like what I remember seeing or reading. Um, But enrolled for the second semester uh, of the spring, he will be um, uh, assumingly ready for off-season camp and stuff like that. 6'2", quarterback out of Pinson, Alabama. A three-star prospect ranked inside the top 750 in the country. Chose the Cardinals over a handful of schools such as um, such as South Florida. Um, also, you have some other offers from, from big-time programs in, in the Power Five. Um such as Virginia Tech, you know, so on and so forth. Um, But he's a player to watch for really because the backup quarterback position at Louisville has yet to truly um, get solidified over the past couple seasons. Now, obviously, in 2019, um, Evan Conley, um, you know, took a step forward and was able to, um, you know, really – compete and overall produce when Malik Cunningham went out with injury. Uh, ever since then, the past couple seasons, he struggled when Malik has been hurt and he's uh, his number has been called. Um, it doesn't seem like um, the backup quarterback position has been solidified whatsoever. That's where Caleb Johnson is a player to watch for, in my opinion. Um, when I watch his game, I I really think he's kind of more of a pocket passer than he is a dual threat, although he is officially listed as a dual threat on most recruiting services. Uh, can make things happen with his legs when plays break down. But overall, I, I love his footwork in the pocket. I think that he is a very strong arm, can um, hit receivers in stride, especially when he is on the run, scrambling outside of the pocket. I think that he does a great job of improvisation and allowing to, uh, or I guess, um, you know, allowing the play to develop and and keeping the play alive and um, being able to deliver on time throws into a very kind of small pocket of space in a small window. So I've, I've been impressed um, really with all of the highlights that I've seen from him. I don't obviously think he's going to, um, you know, take the starting spot from Malik Cunningham by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think, um, you know, as the old saying goes, iron sharpens iron. I think adding competition into the quarterback room not only helps Malik Cunningham in terms of, you know, competing, but also, um, you know, possibly gives the Louisville Cardinals a solid backup quarterback option, which uh, it's something that we saw last season, especially against Clemson when Malik Cunningham went out of the game against the Tigers back at Cardinal Stadium, the Louisville offense could not even get a first down. So it it really, you know, it's without being said, you know, needing a backup quarterback for the Cardinal program. And I think that Caleb Johnson uh, could be in the mix for that um, backup role 
That, in my opinion, is why he is a player to watch for as we head into the offseason. The other two players are both wide receivers. Look, we mentioned over the past couple episodes, especially with Tyler Harrell now in the transfer portal, that the wide receiving committee has a has some question marks around it. Who is going to step up? Uh, you lose um, Jordan Watkins, the basically one of the top receivers from the team last season. Tyler Harrell, who had over 500 receiving yards, is gone. Justin Marshall transferred out. Obviously, you insert um, D. Wiggins, uh, Tyler Hudson, uh, both uh, transfers. Obviously, some more wide receiving uh, recruits. And who knows? With the departure of Tyler Harrell, that may um, push Scott Satterfield and company to look to bring in another receiver via the transfer portal. And they have the spots to do so. But um, in this class, there are two receivers that are, are very different in terms of skill sets. But I think that this offseason is key for both of them because the opportunity is there to try to crack into the you know the rotation and get some meaning, meaningful snaps. Obviously, you know you have Amari Hug. Bruce, Tyler Hudson, Josh Johnson, um, you know, so on and so forth that are, are going to place meaningful snaps. You know, maybe there isn't necessarily a starting position open, but um, being able to compete for some backup minutes or backup snaps, not backup minutes. I keep, I'm, I'm in basketball mode, um, but I think that if there is a position where you could see um, a freshman – be able to step in right away and play a lot of snaps. Wide receiver could end up being one of those positions. Chance Morrow uh, had some big-time offers from some big-time programs, uh, ranked inside of, just inside of the top 900. Um, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina native, uh, 6'6", 190 pounds. Uh, had a handful of offers from great schools, Miami, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oklahoma. The list goes on. I've been very impressed with his film. Obviously, with his size, the number one thing that you're thinking of immediately is okay. Well, he could provide that uh, jump ball, um, you know, threat when it comes to the end zone around the red zone. Something that um, you know usually is Malik Cunningham territory, but at least you have that option now. Um, I, I do have to mention it, it does seem like the. Um, one of the main questions with uh, an offense with Malik Cunningham is, you know, where does the impact come from a receiver who is mainly uh, kind of an aerial threat, more of a jump ball receiver, a taller receiver? Um, I, I think that best case scenario, you see Chance more kind of playing a Seth Dawkins role, kind of similar in size, although. Um, I think Morrow might be just a tad bit taller, but I was impressed with his ability to create some, um, you know, some space at the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, not only that, but his footwork and obviously his athleticism um, with his six six frame could end up uh, leading him to be a very solid contributor for this team down the road. But I think that there is a possibility that he could be competing for meaningful meaningful snaps right away uh, with his size, with his upside. Um, I think that he has underrated speed. Um, I, I like his hands, especially being able to high point the football. And with his size, you're going to win a good amount of the jump ball, the 50-50 um, you know, contests. So it really just depends on does his skill set – fit in with the identity of this global offense that really um, it emphasizes speed, it emphasizes quickness, uh, emphasizes the um, intermediate routes, the um, you know, underneath routes, not necessarily those deep posts that uh, Chance Morrow has or was running um, for his high school in Charlotte. So, I guess that that's where the question lie, or the question you know stands is what does the you know potential role look like for Chance Morrow? But he's a player to watch for uh, of the incoming freshman. And another receiver that I'm very interested to see um, what he's able to do in the off season is um, Chris Bell, and he was a late a late addition the um, the six two receiver out of Yazoo City. Um, I think it's uh, Michigan, correct? Sioux City, Michigan. I 
believe that's MS's. No, Mississippi. I'm, I tell you, I'm losing my mind. Um, I, I feel like I say that every single show. Um, but Chris Bell kind of reminds me somewhat of Des Fitzpatrick in in the sense that they have kind of the same build. Um, you know, six foot two, uh, 220 pounds, big, strong receiver. Um, has the ability to really um, create some separation with solid footwork. Um, change of speed is very solid as well. I, I like his catch radius. I, I do think that he does a great job of high pointing the football as well. And at the end of the day, it is a little bit underrated now. He's only ranked, um, you know, just outside of the top 1,300 recruits. So, you know, a true diamond in the rough if he does pan out um, for the Louisville Cardinals. But I'm interested to see what Bell is able to do in the offseason because I think that he has the skill set to be able to compete with guys like Tyler Hudson, um, you know, D. Wiggins, uh, whoever the starters are going to be. I don't think that Morrow or Bell are, are going to be starters at the end of the day, and you know, right away, but I do think they could be competing for some meaningful snaps um at least maybe not right away at least later on in the season but the off season will be a telltale sign of what is to come and i'm intrigued to see um you know what the uh word is on how those three freshmen are competing as we get into the late summer heading into preseason camp so we'll take this time now to Transition over into the defensive side of things where we will talk about Popeye Williams, Selah Brown, and Tawfiq Thomas. Uh, before we do that, we will discuss our friends over at Built Bar. Um, as you probably already are aware, I'm not a huge guy. Or I'm not a huge um, fan of resolutions. I'm not a resolution guy. Um, but at the end of the day, I think this this year has been all about changing my body and being uh, healthier, eating right. Um, although Built Bar doesn't solve all of my health uh, and nutritional goals, uh, it does represent a large, um, you know, f- it represents a large um, faction of that. So, uh, you know, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, it's covered in 100% real chocolate, um, you know, high in protein, low in calories. You can go to Built.com and check out the macros chart. And it literally lays it all out for you on the line. There are a handful of different flavors that um, they make delicious first, and they find out how to how to make it healthy later. So, and basically, it seems like they always succeed. So, do yourself a favor: go to built.com, use the promo code locked fifteen, locked fifteen, and you'll get fifteen percent off your order. Once again, that's using the promo code locked fifteen for fifteen percent off at built.com. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked on Louisville your first to listen every day. Now for a big announcement that you've heard if you've been listening to the show. Starting Thursday, April 28th, tune in to Locked on NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and Locked On's NFL Mock Draft special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show all week leading up to the first pick. Back in to talking about the um, incoming freshmen and which ones to watch for as it pertains to the offseason. Defensively speaking, we're talking about Popeye Williams, Selah Brown, and Toffee Thomas. Now, uh, the first recruit in that sequence, um, Popeye Williams was sort of, I guess you could say, the crown jewel of the class, ranked inside of the top 200. Um, some high praise from a lot of scouts across the country. I'll read you what... Um, Alan True said from uh, 24-7 Sports, he has projected him as a Power 5 starter and compared him to Hassan Reddick of, of, Hassan Reddick of the Philadelphia Eagles. Twitchy edge rusher with some explosive qualities. Seems um, that he has a subtle dip, which makes it tough for offensive linemen to get a clean punch on him. His lateral agility also makes it tough for blockers to get their hands on him in pass protection. Does a nice job with his hands. Is quick and assertive with those. He shows good closing ability, um, has good explosion, 
plays with good plays with a good motor. Main concern with him would be size. He is over 6'2 and around 222 225 pounds. He will have to show he can anchor in against the run against bigger college offensive linemen. He is a really good player and has some good athletic qualities. He is going to be able to rush the passer and based on his technique and work ethic, he has a great chance to be more than that. Uh, 4-3 weak defensive end or maybe a 3-4 outside linebacker. Um We've seen from camps that you know he's gotten some very high praises. Obviously, in the four three that Louisville was sort of shifting to this upcoming season with Ashton Gelati and Yaya Diaby being the assumed starters, um, you would hope that Popeye is able to make the two deep and be a rotational uh, pass rusher for the Cardinals, which would be a huge luxury for Scott Satterfield's defense. Um, you know, having a, a guy of his caliber uh, backing up either Gelati or Yaya Diaby. And that's where the, um, you know, the notion of him being a player to watch for here, obviously because he is the top rated signee in the class, but also because he is coming in at, at a position of need. Um, defensive line help, pass rush, something that the Cardinals got better in in 2021, but still um, are looking to make strides into becoming a better defense overall. Putting pressure on the opposing quarterback is going to be the name of the game, and Popeye Williams uh, hopefully uh, is able to be a player that can be relied upon early on. So Popeye Williams, the number one player to watch, regardless of um, position to watch in the offseason in terms of incoming freshmen. Speaking of incoming freshmen to watch, Selah Brown, the 6'2", defensive lineman from Louisville Mill High School, the hometown hero, ranked just outside of the top 400, um, committed to the Cardinals. Uh, Alan True has compared him to Christian Covington and also has um, projected him as a Power 5 starter. Um, what Alan had to say about Selah Brown is this. Disruptive, high-motor player, has great quickness off the snap and lateral agility, does not give up on plays and can change direction and close distance. Aggressive and gets good pad level, which helps him drive bigger offensive linemen backwards. Needs to add additional weight and strength. Likely will not carry tons of weight, but can also be effective as a lower weight three tech who can sometimes move out to end safely a projection to power five starter and productive player playing beyond that will likely depend on growth potential. Um, and this, you know, really speaks to the need for this global defense. The defensive line is um, a position that there are still some question marks at, um, you know, there hasn't been a lot of addressing the position in the transfer portal. I don't I actually don't think that there has been at all. Um, Des Till is a possible starter there going from three, four to four, three, you know, creates the additional defensive line position, um, in terms of starting. So Selah Brown, um, at least offering some solid depth would be a big luxury for the Cardinals. He's a player that like, like, uh, Alan mentioned, will likely spend most of his time on the interior, but could move out to the end in certain packages. So this is where I'm interested to see how Selah Brown looks in the offseason, uh, because is the staff going to use him more on the interior? Is he going to be used more on the edge? What does Brian Brown and company, Brian Brown, Mark Ivey and company, see in Selah Brown in terms of his potential moving forward? I'm very interested to see that. Um, but one player that, um, you know, it, it's pretty clear cut what his role will be, assuming that he can get to that level, is Taufik Thomas, um, the uh, the defensive lineman out of Tampa, Florida. I mean, 6'3", 325 pounds, um, can play as a nose tackle, can play as an interior defensive lineman, um, ranked as the 875th best player in the country. Arguably my favorite um, recruit in the class because I think he is going to be exactly what the doctor ordered for the University of Louisville. It's all about getting bigger on the defensive line, uh, creating a disruption, especially in the middle of the line, the middle of the defense. We've seen you know teams abuse the inside against Louisville. Um, that has helped a little bit with the, um, you know, with better linebacking play and better play off the edge. But the interior defensive line needs to take the next step forward. Tofik Thomas, um, you know, being 6'3", 325 pounds, um, <clears throat> moves very well for his size. I like, uh, the, you know, I like his footwork. I like um, his explosiveness. 
um, his drive off the line of scrimmage. Oftentimes at the high school level, he was double teamed and just completely shredded double teams, which was crazy to watch highlights of. Um, ultimately, the talent is there. Um, the explosiveness on the defensive line, he is an absolute disruption for opposing offensive linemen. Um, does solid in terms of uh, being able to rush the quarterback for the interior, um, but also just a complete um, force when it comes to the run defense. So that's where I'm extremely excited because I'm interested to see where he's sitting at in the depth chart as we head into preseason ball and into the season opener. So um, like I said, Popeye Williams, Selah Brown, Tofik Thomas are the three to watch for here for the Cardinals um, all on the defensive line, which is the, um, you know, the position that I'm looking for on the defense to take the next step forward. So, we will talk more about football off-season notes and things of that nature whenever we get some more information on the football program. Um, but to conclude this bonus episode of the show, we will dive into the weekly mailbag segment with there, where there are a couple questions um, spanning over multiple sports. We will do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry because you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You're allowed to save time and money. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every customer. You can go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. That website is rockauto.com, and you can see all the parts available for your car or truck. Hey, right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. So as I mentioned, the final segment of the show dedicated to the mailbag. Um, there are a couple questions that I want to answer, uh, some revolving around the um, roster for next season for the Cardinals, um, others uh, centered around football and things of that nature. We will start out with football. Um, the question, the first question is, what is a realistic expectation for Tyler Hudson next season? Um, that's a good question. Sorry about that. Um but to answer your question, I think that, I, I mean, I guess this is from just an overall expectation, um, you know, line of thinking, because statistically, I don't really feel comfortable putting a number on that because it's an, it's an offense that's dominated with rushing the football. Obviously, Malik Cunningham being a dual threat quarterback, there are multiple receivers in this offense, and not to mention you have Jalen Mitchell, Tyon Evans, and Travion Cooley, so... Um, a lot of mouths to feed in the Louisville offense. So statistically, I don't necessarily, um, you know, want to put a number on that. But I do think expectation wise, you know, you could see Tyler Hudson being the 1A or 1B in this Louisville offense. I think he's going to be a, a player that wins a couple ACC Player of the Week awards. Um, I, I do think he is that solid. Um, ultimately, the expectation for me is I think that uh, – He's going to be a player that, you know, Louisville can rely on uh, to be the number one receiver at times like they're able to do with Amari Huggins-Bruce. So it, it's kind of a vague expectation. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that as the season kind of gets closer. Obviously, we're a little bit away. Um, we're a ways away, I should say. But ultimately, I do think you know, being a 1A or 1B receiver it should not be out of the question for Tyler Hudson. Um the next question stays with football, and it is, who do you think is going to be the uh, game one starter in the Louisville backfield? Whew. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I will say this. I think all three players, um, you know, both all three of uh, Mitchell, Evans, and Cooley are going to see a good amount of touches in, in the week one game. It obviously depends on health. In terms of the first series, maybe Jalen Mitchell, uh, just because he was the starter for most of the time last season. But 
like I said, I, I think that it would not surprise me if a good offseason from Tyon Evans or Travion Cooley um, made things a little bit more interesting in the um, – in the Louisville backfield. So I don't necessarily think it's a matter. It should be a matter of who's starting, but who gets the most touches? Um, who is the hot hand week one for the Cardinals? Now that, that argument may shift um, in, in that, in that the answer may be different every, other, every other week, just because of how crowded the Louisville backfield is and how much talent the Louisville backfield has. So um, those are the two football questions that were asked. The, uh, there's a couple men's basketball questions. Number one, um, this is directed towards Amani Bates um, entering the transfer portal. Um, there really hasn't been uh, official word that the Cardinals have um, gone after Bates, but if it became a possibility, would you be okay with Amani Bates being a Louisville Cardinal? Um Obviously, Bates' season at Memphis this past season didn't necessarily go the way that uh, both parties had hoped. Um, he averaged under 10 points per game. Didn't necessarily look all that great. Um, now, obviously, a little bit younger, so he has to play in either another year of college or he has to um, you know, go to the G League or overseas before he is able to be eligible for the NBA draft. I think I'm going to... Really, I'm going to trust Kenny Payne in the coaching staff. Um, obviously, I think that if he were to come to Louisville, there would be a good sector of the fan base that would question the addition. Um, rightfully so. I think that, um, you know, it, it seemed like there was some um, there was some disagreement over a possible like injury situation or something like that. I don't necessarily know the um, I, I don't necessarily know the overall um, context of the situation. So I don't want to speculate or anything like that, but I, I guess it would really come down to trusting Kenny Payne, Nolan Smith and Danny Manning. If they believe that he can come in here and succeed, help this team out and be able to kind of, um, get his career to the spot to where he wants it to be. Um, then who am I to, uh, doubt either of those coaches? Um, I, I guess it really would just depend on if, if Kenny Payne, is is looking to bring him on to to the team uh, in terms of position wise I, I think right now the main thing that everybody's wanting to see is guard play because outside of l ellis there really isn't another true guard on the on the team outside of maybe mike james uh kamaria lands might be able to play the two guard at, at, at some you know spots but usually more of a of a three um so bringing another wing onto the team obviously you have six scholarship uh, six or seven scholarships to um, to uh, utilize, so you can take a wing like um, Amani Bates. Um, it really just depends. Like I said, it, it's uh, you know there's no denying that th there was it, it wasn't a great ending for Amani Bates um, on Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers. But if Kenny Payne is open to bringing him on the team. Uh, you know, who am I to tell him that he should not? So uh, I'm kind of in the group of the verdict is still out. I'm kind of one of those show me rather than tell me um, when it comes to, you know, transfer portal additions and stuff like that. So the last question on the mailbag is, should the Louisville Cardinals go after Tyrese Hunter, the uh, transfer from Iowa State? Um, simply put, uh, 100%. Tyrese Hunter is arguably, in my opinion, the number one transfer on the, I'm sorry, in the portal um, as we speak, uh, surpassing Kendrick Davis, in my opinion, uh, averaging 11 points per game, 4.9 assists, 3.5 rebounds, and being very, very solid defensively. He was named the all Big 12 um, freshman of the year and has played some big time um you know, minutes throughout the season for an Iowa State team that made the Sweet 16 as sort of a Cinderella team. So 100%, um, I know that there were rumors that he was possibly going to go to North Carolina. The, there has been some sources that have, you know, refuted that across, you know, Twitter and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, if the question is, should Louisville reach out to Tyrese Hunter? 
Um, you know, he is the best transfer in the portal, in my opinion. I personally, I would. So, um, but that's going to wrap up this tu- this Tuesday, this Wednesday edition of the show. Thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen every day. Tomorrow's episode, we are going to have a special guest from the Locked On Podcast Network on the show. We're also going to talk about more, um, you know, basketball stuff and everything in, of that nature. Do yourself a favor. Make your second listen, Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. But hey, that's going to wrap up this Wednesday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day, and we will see you right back here.